Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question. That is to look in and discuss covert narcissists in love and their parenting styles. This is a great explosive question. Um, and thank you so much for your questions. And thank you so much for your donations. If you have a burning question, something that you want to get out in the open, something you want us to look at in the channel, feel free to comment or and, and make a donation at the PayPal button here. And we'll get your question out there in the open and basically living what I call basically living and loving out loud. Uh, you you have to be able to have that whew, exhale breath. Whitney Houston, uh, I don't know, there's you know she had a song about being able to exhale. So in other words, there's a there's a covert narcissist in love um, that that doesn't really ever have that sort of exhale and inspiration back and forth. Um, the covert narcissist bottles up all the good stuff, all the energy, all the sort of inspiration bottles it up within and doesn't sort of let it out like a cork even on New Year's Eve. Uh, very seldom do you get um, a, a covert narcissist where you truly feel that they are expressing love. Uh, they, they will show love in the beginning. But it's, you know, and usually love for them means um, living and bestowing what they feel are their uh, positive qualities. They're a strong leader. They're good da, 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 in business. Their humor, their cooking, you know, their background. There's usually some sort of character that precedes them, almost like a horse before a cart. So they're... And, and before we get off galloping on this, you, you must understand that in the beginning, it's not the same as a love relationship that would map out in terms of equal challenging, living and loving out loud. Um, instead, it, the, it's a perpetration of a passive aggressive sort of bottling up, not allowing, not showing, not emoting. So not emoting means to share emotion. You see a gospel singer and they're emoting just some sort of uh, discovery within their soul and they're singing at the top of their lungs. You know, this is emoting, getting your feelings out. Covert narcissist feelings like a marble slate. There is even a new Nike shoe out that has a soul walking on stone bottom. What is up with that? This is weird, weird consumerism and behavior. You must understand that a covert in love doesn't display what you would typify hold as sort of an abstract or a feeling or a need of love. You might know that it's missing, but you might just have stuffed it down. What does stuffing it down mean? Covert narcissists in love, because they don't have an, emo an emotion, a sharing of this energy and motion, it's usually predicated on what they feel is some sort of role or obligation that they are thrust in when indeed it is of their life and of their doing, but there's a sort of a, a, um, a supposing that then it requires some other sort of emotional calculation that involves sort of a hoarding of emotion unto themselves, meaning they will, you know, they will only uh, do specific and have certain specific experiences and they don't share that with, with others, whether they're in, you know, the midnight trolling hours of uh, the internet um, whether they're at work, um, but you just kind of feel that they're too much behind closed doors. There isn't sort of this intimacy into me, I see. 
you know, intimacy. So to be intimate with someone oftentimes is a big challenge indeed for a lot of people. Oh boy, you know, putting your feelings out there, uh, getting aroused, showing if you have sort of a, if a covert narcissist doesn't want to be challenged a specific way, then you're going to see a lot of inhibition um, in, in specific departments. Um, you're going to see sort of, meaning you're, you kind of keep wanting to knock on their door and there's no one answering. The covert narcissist in love, you have to chase, you have to wonder, you have to concern yourself, you have to assume a lot, um, sort of because if things aren't spoken, the body then as a human begins to assume certain things. It's kind of like if you, do you remember um, in school, um, you know, or they used to say back in the 90s, if I don't know this was a saying back then, but, you know, if you haven't made a decision, then you've really made a decision. So in other words, it's a passive aggressive love style, meaning um, there's sort of tokens uh, that you're supposed to figure out. There's a lot of figuring out with a covert narcissist. This is a lot of emotional work. This takes a toll on someone's being. If you have a job, kids, uh, you have to cook, you have to clean, you have to do other things, you're, it's gonna spill over and sort of uh, disrupt other areas of your life. This is a violation, this is violation energy, really sort of played out in the long run, meaning it doesn't get resolved until you quote unquote figure it out is if why don't they just say well why don't you figure it out they they don't live out loud in the way that you perhaps are needing them to live and share out loud the co covert narcissist love style is sort of like uh come hither but then they will keep control of the door and oftentimes the door is closed um and that really presents a challenge, creates a lot of work, a lot of self-doubting. What's wrong with me? Uh, that question can go on for years and never get answered. Um, this is not a good way to spend your life or your time if you want to live and feel fulfilled and live constructively. Um, and a covert narcissist in love, because of that aloofness, they sort of... Um, is sort of this era of mystery. You can't touch them. They like this. They want it that way. Whether it's good for you or not, this is what you get. Um, the sort of an, a feeling of indifference is oftentimes received and interpreted as uh, rejection. I am on, uh, you don't love me. And then that furthermore repeated over time becomes I am unlovable. And then the body then will enter into a lot of anxiety, panic patterns, and, and try to um, resolve that without really having terms that are spoken. You're not living out loud in, in the relationship. You're bottled up. Uh, you might as well begin learning sign language because there ain't no language or, you know, you might as well be speaking Portuguese because you're not going to get an answer back. You know, you might as well be putting Braille on the door because they're not going to make the effort. It's not reciprocated. That hurts. It doesn't, sometimes, you know, people don't realize it's not being reciprocated. Getting stuck with this pattern. Um, it's not evolving. It's not growing. People are, are fighting. How much of your life do you want to spend and, and that's why healing, you have to look at an element of choice, i.e. incorporating the free will, the free will, meaning your free will, that needs to be liberated and have the audacity, the courage, the fire within, the faith, um, and the passion to say, can I look at this and see perhaps where it's not a win-win? Can I admit that to myself? Can I take the glasses off the glasses, off the glasses that are on the glasses that were on the glasses? Hollywood, uh, why are you wearing sunglasses just 24-7? You're in the club, you're wearing sunglasses. I mean, you know, 
Um, life is not foolproof. Get the fools out of your life and you will have proof of a better life, a better history, a better legacy, a better, you know, a lot of life and healing. You know, oftentimes the fodder needs to be what you have behind you and then looking forward, but having some place and semblance of balance that can give you your place in the present in order to create and have look back in a better history and look at the gleaming points, the positive, and therefore then plan the, the future. The covert narcissist isn't um, involved in this sort of uh, exploration. You are going to have to be... Um, you're going to have to be uh, the digger on the mountain. You're going to have to find the path. Maybe you love to find the path. And so this could have been a really great uh, relationship match for you until you realize sort of you're not getting support where it's needed. The children aren't getting support. There's a lot of sort of, you know, uh, cloaking of invisibility. Um, what is the electric dream color and the cloak of invisibility, Donny Osmond? I mean, that play. I mean, as if they, they're just, and they don't have to, they, they just sort of base this as a normal. And it goes unquestioned. Um, it will not, it will, it will be met with something that they're already in control and they're not changing. So whether they're stubborn, it's not really stubborn. Um, it's just like a, a, uh, an irresponsibility or an ear like a, a disinterest in change because they don't experience the empathy of another and be like hey you know I would really love to share this with you can you come down to my level come to my level share this in an intimacy rather than it being like a uh, like a, a Russian uh, government board meeting where you've got Putin or whatever his name is on one end and then 60 uh, feet the other way, maybe 90 feet, you got the other person who he's dining with. You know, you've got a row of God knows how many centerpieces and the guy is showing you who's the boss. I mean, you can't get near him. It's very different than other um, sort of uh, love styles. Out in the open, sharing feelings, sharing deep thoughts, even with children, teaching values. Uh, speaking in front of children that include them, not acting like they're not there, they're not on that level, or they can't understand. The covert uh, narcissist loves to, or, or basically naturally, sort of assigns uh, sort of imbecility, uh, lowliness, uh, these sort of terms to others in their ranking of society. In college, I remember studying... Uh, studying a required course and we were looking at um, and studying India and they had this sort of hierarchy system back in ancient days or what have you. Uh, the caste system, C-A-S-T-E. So I did a lot of study about that, um, about that, you know, that economy, that culture. And, and so in their hierarchy, in that, you know, you have sort of the unclean, uh, the, the poverty stricken, those who were weird, strange, cast out into basically the river, uh, the caste system, you know, you know, eating crumbs of bread. I mean, just not having a life, you know, relegating them to the lowly, you know, the in incumbent sort of uh, you're unable. They, they have a vision of disability for others, meaning they're not going to share in their experience, their achievements in a way that is mutually um, engaging. Um, and there is, you know, this is sort of creates a chemistry and fulfillment within. When you're giving a hug to somebody, it's not the same as giving an emoji. Your body is in it, you're both in it to win it. What is wrong with a win-win? It takes a very strong, secure person to be happy for the accomplishments of another without being threatened. Oh, you know, congratulations. You just got your $750,000 house and you're, you know, you're living in um, a basement, you know, and you're still happy for them. You're not jealous. You're not trying to sabotage them. 
You're not looking to put in your finger in their wedding cake and and cause all sorts of mayhem, trouble, um, have things go awry, troublemaking. Why, uh, you know, isn't the bride the center of intention? You know, things get, this, this happens, okay? And so getting down to really um, that, that love style, realize that sort of um, leaving others unfulfilled is their calling card. This is just how they are. Peace and harmony, that's really strange, that's cruel. Well, if you have felt and interpreted it such, we need to reframe that. Um, it, it is. It does not feel warm and cuddly. It does not feel cozy. It does not feel like a handshake, a bear hug, haven't seen you in a while, high five, how you been? Uh, tell me about this, and I can hear about you. You know, and instead, you know, they're 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 trying to always point the gun. Um, why is there a gun? An emotional gun? No, narcissists, because of just their personality traits, don't even assign negativity. I mean, just look at it in a neutral, in a neutral way. So they they by virtue of of their personality, they think, feel, know, and believe that they are superior or better than others. The Spartans, the superior race. Uh, check out some of the history uh, documentaries that talk about like uh, Sparta, early Greece, uh, the superior race. Um, you know, if you didn't have buttocks this big as a, a, of a man as a child, you might have gotten thrown down into some valley ditch with the other girls or other babies that didn't seem fit for their superior culture. Who thought of all this? You know, men were running the show. Women were hidden in caves, never, whatever, to see the light of day. Or, uh, no, actually the woman had a very aggressive sex style. Uh, excuse me for that. That was a really different... Um, culture that you get there you know i mean and look at some of the history and lore and you'll kind of feel a little bit good for where you're at right now even though you're you're living in this sort of um very silent tyranny it's it's a, a, a tyranny of silence it's a relegation to not knowing it's living um it's living in a beyond a secrecy it's just living in a repression um, rep repression is a Freudian term where you have to push down um, and not acknowledge and validate your needs. So you're hungry. If you repress that, can't eat now. You know, if you're thirsty, oh, there's no water fighting. I, you know, I can't drink now. Repress. Deny, deny, deny. I need a hug. It's not coming. Uh, you might as well hug yourself or hug a tree or hug a wall. It's going to be better. You might need a, uh, I'm getting a nose itch. You might need a, a emotional support dog. I mean, this, you ain't getting any blood from this turnip. You're not getting any, um, joy and warmth from this embrace. It's going to be sort of a, eh, like they don't really care either way. Um, they're afraid to show emotion. Do they even have emotion? You're trying to pull it out of them like you're trying to pull out wisdom teeth um, that are five feet back in someone's head. You know, do you have, you know, trying to get something out of them? Um, and instead, then it becomes very externally their love style. Is, is as long as they can be attended to and know that they're attended to, covert narcissist is going to go singing through the tulips, shut up buttercup, it's all good with me, so it's all good with you. It's this assumptive uh, love style um, that goes unchallenged, unchecked. And if you like living with that sort of husband in a different bed, uh, living in a, a husband in a different country, a husband in a different state, uh, a different house, a different leg, you know, they live, sleep in this basement and you're in this bedroom. I mean, and you're not saying that this is you know, you have to then look at and evaluate and tech stock because that covert narcissist love style might have that sort of ambient of seduction, you know, and that sort of um, debonair um, esque, uh, like I'm they're the man of the world, but sometimes they are, are not as such. But you might be the partner of the world, so you might show them 
um, and redeem to them that they need to open up, you know. So when, when, when couples are not on sort of the same percussive movement, they don't have the same rhythm. They might have a certain type of chemistry, but there's still that walnut in the back of their head that is yanking for attention. You know, um, the love factor, the embrace factor, the sharing factor. Um, you know, so many couples today, they live in this sort of device-oriented um, relationship now. It wasn't like that long ago. Um, you know, people, men in the street, why don't you come over? Um, you know, I had a telephone with my neighbor that had two tennis ball cans or, you know, and then we also tried to make them with Campbell soup cans, a rope and a string. And I would, we would pull the string and we would try to make our own telephone between the houses. Um, kids did not have a phone. The phone was plugged into the house. Okay. You couldn't pull the phone out of the other room. The kids might then try and break it. You know, this, so now you have to realize how the covert narcissist can utilize and hide behind technology. Um, this can be silently a burning hurt. Um, and this can create a sort of disaster as people get older. The covert love style also as it reflects to their children is very much in the same repertoire, meaning, um, you know, they might show affection uh, or single out another who they feel is of the caliber. Just sort of, I don't have to spend the time. They don't feel an obligation, a sense of duty, uh, a commitment, a calling, an empathy, um, a regard for others. They have a pathological, which means of disease, pathology. If you were to find pathology in your blood report, doctor would be like, yo, you know, you're your blood is off, you need iron supplements. I mean, so there is this, um, you know, lack um, in the chemistry. So oftentimes it's very difficult to put into words. Um, we're not just, something's just oh, getting to me, you know, and then you just sort of, and you're not able to get it out. And then it becomes just like you're a pin in a tomato. You just feel like you're constantly stuck hurting. You can't pull the pin out. Covert, you know, uh, uh, parenting styles of their children, they don't really see them or have that vision that we're talking about yesterday, which is so important, I feel, for bonding. In, um, from my, I remember my friend Mukul, uh, who talked about in Indian, and I shared some of this now, you know, we were speaking about this, uh, sort of Ahimsa study of Gandhi, um, Nonviolence and how powerful nonviolence is when you're standing up for something. Obviously, you're living out loud. <laughs> if you're making these changes, you know, eventually you're like, ah, you know, you're like ready to scream. And you might even be hearing this often in your life. I am ready to scream. I could jump off, uh, you know, I could, I feel like I'm on fire. I'm burning. I'm seething. I'm so, you know, I feel so wronged. And then this, you know, becomes a deeper and deeper anger, wronged, resentment, um, having, you know, wanting restitution, wanting, you know, feeling life ha owes it to you, you know, getting into these deeply upsetting, disturbing states. How long do you want that? Like, that might not be your love style, um, to, to be in that manner, to living, um, you know, all into yourself. Uh, for some people who are very introverted, that might be a fantastic love relationship um, to have you guys always separated. Um, and it might work for you. Uh, but, you know, but that love style then might begin to grind on others. Sort of a that indifference, um, meaning you get dressed up. Eh, it doesn't, they don't notice you've lost 50 pounds. They don't really notice. Um, you, you're clamoring, you know, you're doing jumping jacks and bouncing up and down and they don't even look. I mean, it's just, there's sort of this inaptitude, um, to connect and bond with others. Like an Indian, um, my friend Mukal was saying that there's an actual word in term in Indian that 
that equates for, for sort of that kinmanship, fellowship. There's a certain fulfillment that comes from a, a friendship that isn't questioned, that, that you know, um, allows you to live out loud, that allows your personality to sparkle, <laughs> allows you to just be yourself. You say funny and silly things. You say fun and funny and serious things. You want to be taken seriously. You have never felt that you're taken seriously. This can really um, drive an emotional wedge in your gut, in your back, in your neck, in your heart. You know, this is time to get that, that big hulking wood out of your gut and just being like, okay, let's let this out, release and let go. Release it, which just means, you know, any sort of incumbent or shut down feelings, you just say, let go. I'm no longer living in the basement. The basement mentality is not a good energetic match for me. And I no longer want to assign myself to that role. Why? Because in a covert love style, um, a covert narcissist love style, which means they're like a narcissist, but sort of they don't really flaunt it. So if you can think of it like an overt, um, before I, I miss my uh, thought, oh boy, okay, because I was just going to go into a comparison. So in that in that love style, there there is sort of a of a, a lack of vision um, and a lack of sort of foresight that's required to help help you to manifest and actualize in life. You cannot simultaneously live shut down, live in silent suffering, and expect uh, different results other than more hurt. You're putting yourself in that covert narcissist sauce. So meaning that they, they sort of want to relegate that, that to you. They expect this to continue without question. It's rigid. But until you can call something else different forth into being or just move in the direction of your fulfillment regardless you must then understand that their love style is is not to um sort of show up in the way that you would expect there's letdowns disappointments oops i did it again oops you know um they forgot oops it's not ready you know, just a lack of effort, a lack of um, sort of kinmanship that feels, you know, um, that, you know, hey, hey, you know, this is fair. I mean, there's this sort of unspoken contract when you're in love. And then with the children, that same dis disregard, whereas if, you know, they're always sort of busy with themselves, they're always sort of doing themselves today. They're not help, you know, they're not in, oh, the assigned roles. That's what I'm circling back to. So my understanding, and you might understand this as well, that the covert narcissist love style is to assign roles to others before you have even preceded the stage. I.e., if you are their spouse, they have relegated you to the role of do, 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 whether you know or have agreed to it and know what the contract is written. If you don't, you're going to spend a lot of your time wondering, guessing, and, 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 and this is an exercise of futility, which means it becomes more and more wasteful of your time when you're trying to figure out why this role is setting you into infamy. In fame, you know, it's not, it's not giving you the acclaim, the, the life, the recognition, the arm in arm, the hand in hand, the ooey wowie together that you had wanted, expected, or deep down under the repression that you might have drank, fed, gambled yourself down when you didn't have time to express it. They're not available. They're busy. Their phone doesn't work. They're car is not, da, 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 you know, whatever the circumstance, um, you must know it to be. And so it is. Um, you know, they, they have this strong independence. They have autonomy. These are all positive characters. I'm not trying to defame any covert narcissist lifestyle or their caring of their children. 
you must realize that it's going to have their its limitations, its restrictions. Um, it's going to have and feel like it's not going. It's not growing. It's not, there's no pedal on the gas. Um, this, you know, can life be different? Yes, it can. Um, you must commit then and understand that you must know, appreciate, and respect your own love style. Your own love style, you must get to know on an intimate basis. I mean, uh, unequivocally, without a doubt, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, this is what I'm into. And then just knowing sort of this is not, this is what I'm doing without. Write it down. Even if, if it sounds crazy, funny, men, oh, I'm so embarrassed to journal. I shouldn't have feelings. Are you back in uh, ancient Greece, Sparta, where you got to put on one of those uh, tartan hats and go fight with one of those big brass shields? Uh, 50 deep. No, we're in the, you know, this is 2023. We're moving quickly. Um, you men need to realize it's okay uh, to resolve this if you've had a covert wife, you know, who you basically flipped yourself inside out, backwards, forwards. Um, you know, you've, you bought the jewelry store out. I purchased this myself. But, you know, for that other person, you might have overdone yourself. Over-mothered, over-fathered, over-extended, over-achieved, over, over, over-baked, um, over-shopped, over-gambled, over-slept, over-spent, over-forgot. I mean, it, it requires, so it's sort of an imbalance. You know, if there's an aloofness, it's going to require someone else's energy to sort of create that 100%. And you don't feel that the percentage-wise, it's working out, you know. And this will be disturbing. And this person, you know, you must just then settle the score within. Okay, minus um, 50,000 me plus 5 million them. I mean, just whatever the score is, check, I accept. Oh, I can't stand this peace and harmony. I want retaliation. I want, you know, fairness. Well, you, if it's gotten that far, you might need that. But do you really want to spend your whole life storybook to be written moving forward from this day that I have committed my life to struggle, misunderstanding, confusion, and doubt, and perpetual unhappiness. I mean, if you want to write out your story to be that, then don't be upset wondering why it's still, you know, on second base, why you haven't made it to another base, a different role. They will assign you a role. You know, you are the downcast victim. You are the one who doesn't have love. You are the one who's unrequited. I mean, and then you show up and then you find that that's your role. You got to rip off your name tag and be like, this ain't me. Okay. I am not an imbecile, dodo, dum-dum, worry wart, um, confectioner, sugar, uh, freak, whatever is happening. You know, you have to then realize and disidentify with the role of victim. I do not, I no longer identify with the role of victim. I no longer identify with not having love. I no longer identify with just strict isolation. I no longer identify with not having sharing of emotion. You know, I no longer identify with that lack. I now identify with warmth and affection and smiles. I'm going to try that out. You might not know. Go try it out for an hour. Try it out for five minutes. How does it feel to let go of a, a dis, an unmatched, non-matched love style? Um, you know, and you can't pull out that, you know, that metaphorical uh, wisdom tooth and pull out of, you can't get blood from a turnip. You cannot, you know, get mad at an oak tree and say, why are you an oak tree and not a maple? I want maple syrup. Then why are you still yelling at the oak tree? Why are you still trying to tap an oak tree and wonder why maple syrup isn't coming out? It is not a maple syrup tree. That is not what they have underneath. You might have thought so, had a treasure map, 
you might have had some sort of uh, thinking that this was your maple tree. Uh, this this ain't your maple tree, okay? It's they're not a maple tree. They might be uh, the Rocky Mountains, okay? They can be something else. L you know, release and let go. Stop holding on to the doubt. Oh my God, I'm so scared to do that peace and harmony. It feels really weird not to be freaked out on doubt all the time. Then who am I? Oh boy, I'm emerging from doubt. How about that? I am emerging. Can you be comfortable with these terms? You don't have to commit to, I'm going to be happy uh, for 20 years um, and, and feel that if you don't achieve that, that you're let down. Do not keep setting yourself up for a failure from that, that same loophole that you've been living in. You've been living shut down. You need to love out loud, which means I love you, which means I love you, and which means you have reciprocation, and you feel it, know it. You're not wondering, guessing, um, have a, uh, a chemical suspicion um, that something isn't going, going, going right. And then you're pretty soon your life is going, 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 gone. You know, you are without, and then you're basically your head uh, hat says, I'm without. I mean, is that what your I am to display? I'm without doubt? Okay, I'm. how about I'm without doubt? Just try one per day. But the, the covert love style is going to be in that initial sort of love bomb. There's, there's no one else like them. Okay, and that could very well be. Okay, you might just say, yep, um, just because uh, they're uh, unlike anyone else doesn't mean you have to um, let them drive you um, to insanity. Oh, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. You can be sane. Um, they, they, you might not hear certain things from them. It's okay to be happy. Do you need to hear it from them, that source? Go talk to the brook. Go talk to the forest. Go talk to Mama Moon. Mother Earth, Father North Wind. Uh, you know, they, the ancient Amer uh, Native Americans, they did not talk about Mother Earth to just say, oh, what are we going to name it? We don't have any appropriate word. Let's just name it Mother Earth. I mean, Mother Earth from which all life springs. Your mother, okay, is the Mother Earth. You've got this humongous thing you can call your mama. It is the earth. It is the mother of all things. Think about that. Reflect on that. Does that work for you? Own it if you can. Okay, father, da, da, da. Okay, you have a father. Okay, the, uh, father, Holy Spirit. Father, maybe of the wind. Uh, father of the great eagle. You know, what other, just realize that there's other sort of mentors you know, be careful that they're not uh, like in those people who assign them to be a father of a church and you find that they're uh, problematic. That's not the father I'm talking about. But realize that, you know, there's other greater, stronger and other sort of mother figures that you can receive mothering from or within yourself when you internalize it, fathering from a, a way of uh, sort of honoring someone, something uh, precious or important to you to kind of give your little light of uh, light of uh, warmth back in your heart. I never thought I would love again, live again. Done. I never thought, you know, I now think, I now believe. You have to realize that your thoughts are powerful. Think and believe. Think and grow rich. James Allen, I mean the primer, as you think it. I mean, this is not written... Just because, uh, you know, it it wasn't true. Look at look in your bookstore and find out what are what are books of truth, and then go look in the books. What are the books of non-truth? Where do you find yourself? Where do you want to find yourself? In, you know, now, later this week, later today, later this month, later this year. Where do you want to find yourself? Get a vision. Live and love out loud and make it your style. Make it your own. Uh, if it's weird, 
own it. It doesn't mean go out and be perverted, no, but meaning if you love, if you need to love, say, oh my God, I had an epiphany. I need to love. And like I am, you are responsible for the outcome. A covert narcissist might seem responsible, but it's just kind of like the, the dangling of the treat, you know, come and get it, you know, and then you bite it. And then next thing you know, you're in their territory, they're, you're in their blueprint, you're in their roles, and you don't feel you have your own I am to uh, call upon, live upon. You feel like you're, you might as well, um, you know, have your name written on your shirt. You feel like a nobody, a no one, insignificant, less than. That is sort of the, the <clears throat> if there's a lack of communication, this creates a wall known as a division. This feels and is interpreted by the body as rejection. That sets into motion the fight or flight mechanism. Heart beating, oh my God, I can't make it. I'm being chased after my very, very life is threatened. You know, this is what's going on underneath. That's the, the limbic brain in the body going, holy mackerel, holy guacamole. I've got to run. I've got to flee. I've got to hide. I've got to. And then it's like automatic beeline. You're supposed to be, you know, da, 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 here. You're in, and instead, you feel like you're, it's not in alignment. You're not measuring up for your own internal compass because you've lost it to the roles that have assigned to you, which you can just basically say, you know, I'm just sort of resigning. Uh, you know, I'm retiring. I'm graduating. I'm uh, signing out. Um, I'm, you know, this role, I, the pants don't fit. The shoes don't fit. I've outgrown this. And it's okay to realize and see that. This can be the midlife crisis, pre-life crisis, afterlife. You know, it can be a crisis. But in every crisis, there is opportunity. There is this opportunity. And so you have to see it, reframe it, and take your eyes away from the hurt. Take your eyes away from the doubt. Take yourself away from that, that, you know, repressed, bottled up emotion and let it out. Oh God, you know, I've got a lot to let out. I've got a lot to vent. Own it. Then do this. Then, and have this your way so you will come out on top because you've probably had enough of losing. If you're in a covert narcissist love style, you're going to felt like I've missed out, lost out, didn't get it, wasn't in it didn't in it to win it or something you didn't even know that there was something else because it sort of enshrouded you um in a guilt that you couldn't really sort of see like Kilroy above this wall of lack of communication there is no bridge there is a wall that is the covert narcissist love style and if you expect to love from afar a long-term relationship try to do that in college Boy, was that difficult. You know, who else put themselves through that challenge? Moving schools, moving, uh, we'll have a long-term relationship. Oh, the grief, the, the difficulty, the not knowing. You know, um, the covert narcissists generally, they can pick themselves up and keep going and just, you know, they, they, they won't even wave to you on an exit parade. You know, they'll just sort of keep going and you'll just sort of see the back of their head the bottom of their butt, their foot tracks, you know, you'll just sort of, they'll sort of disappear and that's how they are. That's the beauty of the covert narcissist. They are living the life that they are wired to. Let them have at it. It doesn't mean you have to be abused, unfulfilled, unreconciled, unrequited, living a damsel in distress, calling that your role, you know, the gone with the wind. I'm just fainting every day. And, you know, I'm not being, you know, carried to my promised land, you know, realize and recognize, face this and say, and it's okay. Don't worry about it. It is much better to stomach and acknowledge the hurt 
and put a big green check mark on it with a big old fashioned green crayon because then you're acknowledging certain things. Holy guacamole, I gotta get it together. Holy guacamole, I see it now. I see where my mind was cluttered with doubt. And I've created basically a whole clutter um, coffin, a hill, you know, that I've in my mind, a whole dead spot. And just say, you know what, that's, and that was been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And even if, if the equation doesn't add up, but peace and harmony, I did this, but, but, but. That but is on the other side of your freedom. And if you continue to insert the obstacle for yourself, but I deserve from, from three generations ago, you deserve something is it really that important? Is it worth staking your happiness on, your life on? If yes, then you want to live in that martyrdom guilt. Then you must just say, then this is me. But eventually, you're going to want to grow beyond it and say, you know what? I'm I'm sick of sort of freaking out and, and giving negativity and just jumping on everybody because I'm unfulfilled. Because of this covert nar narcissist lifestyle, because I didn't get it growing up, because I didn't get it from my spouse, my teacher, my neighbor, my manager, um, and I want in life, I want my life to be different. Then keep your eye on what is different, and then sort of make mental checks. This is this is this is me, and then beginning allowing your behavior to flow in the desire of your dreams, your desires. Okay, having dreamy moments, sort of reseducing uh, your future and getting it, giving it a little bit more light, a little bit more comfort, a little bit more security, a little bit more happiness. Whatever it is you're not raising within yourself, realize those are the seeds that you cast out and said, I can never. Why have you thrown out those very valuable seeds? You know, um, and planted, I can never. So it's okay that you might still be harvesting some, I not, I can never feelings, th thoughts, doubts, and behaviors as a result of a ramification of this. They don't, you know, you can love yourself better. Well then have at it. Um, you can get a pet, then have at it. You can get, da, 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 you can get a smile. You can get, um, a rowboat. You can get a canoe. You can get a jet ski. You can get a good book. You can get a good walk. You can get a new uh, series to study. You can develop you. And so that is liberation and freedom. Where do you want to take yourself? If it wasn't so difficult, I would really love to. Write it out there 1 through 20. Even if it seems you don't have the money, you don't have the ability, you don't have the car, the plane tickets, even though it seems so difficult, I would really love to. And being serious, you know, go touch the Blarney Stone in Ireland. Um, I would really love to sail the seven seas. I mean, I don't know what you want to do. You might want to ride a horse. You might want to chase a rainbow. You might want to be a storm chaser. You might want to be a poet. You might want to be a songwriter. You might want to be an archaeologist. You might want to be a carpenter, a carpentress, a millionaire, a millionaires. Okay, a restauranteur, a uh, a wine seller, a, bo a bottle opener. Uh, I don't know what you want to be, but deep inside there might be something, you know, where you sort of lost a vision. You you stopped looking up. The pandemic. This happened, da, 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 da. It's still there. The good is still there. The sun is still shining. The covert narcissist sort of will put the blinds down. Oh, you know, they would rather just sort of um, be conservative for themselves rather than doling out love, laughter, sharing. It's not their style. It's not their grain. It's not their strong suit. It's not their song and dance. It's not their percussion. It's not what they're strumming out. Okay, it, they're, they've got a, and love them for that. It's much easier to heal and grow 
when you recognize them for their humanness that and you you recognize them for all that they have accomplished and all of their restrictions that they have held and been loyal to good for them good for you for being this way you know and that is them you have to give it up to them you are you and so be it i love that um i and you have to forgive you for sort of keeping that emotional sort of battle hitting you because at the end of the day you're responsible to step out of the boxing ring away from the boxing glove away from whatever is swinging at you thoughts um worries concerns that you messed up don't worry about it stop worrying about it make that a goal to be worry free try it out what does it take what is required soothing the body taking a bath epsom salts training yourself to relax training yourself to dream again training yourself to follow up and follow through on your dreams only you can get yourself where you want to be you know even if you've been held back i mean they're like a train. I mean, they're just going to keep rolling down the tracks. If you're braked and waiting for them, you're just going to see a train moving by. You're not, you're, it's going to be, and if you just like that, then you might as well put a garden patch, some sort of house, shelter, and that's where you're going to be at if you accept it. If you don't say, you know, I am going to fulfill myself in this way, you know, knowing this void to be the case knowing this difficulty to be the case what i really owe it in my terms is to do so now in my terms now in my role now in my feelings so meaning under your terms meaning your terms your conditions how you have laid it out what you own what you need to honor and restore okay you might be a classic restoration, okay? You might need to really go there, restore, rehabilitate, remediate, and do it. Oh, peace and harmony. God, this is so weird. I can't believe this. Well, just let it go. Stop holding on to um, a love style, a parenting style that does not serve you, that does not help you that depletes you, feels open, and doesn't give you the room, room that you need to go, 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 that you need to, you know, um, rise up and meet the challenge that you need, you know, to get over that one hurdle. You need to have a little bit of oomph, you know, get some orange juice, get some granola, get some water, whatever it is that really helps motivate you, but not, you know, help yourself to uh, feel good. Pull yourself out of like living, you know, in the drowning river where you weren't hurt. Just be like, hey man, I'm doing a rescue effort. Here you go, pulling you out, drying you off. What do you have going on? What the heck happened with you? Good to see you. You made it out. Okay, let's sit healer by the calm waters and tell me what it's all about. Get it out. Okay, you know, and then what other positive things? And now that I've gotten some of it out, what are some of the positive things I can explore without a doubt that will be fulfilling, that I know this to be true in the case? Going to the art museum, going to the church, the synagogue, the Ukrainian museum, the that, you know, what, what could you do completely different that can sort of reset and recalibrate and get you out of the funk, out of the negative routine, the negative role, the negative lifestyle and negative love style or role that isn't serving you, that someone else has assigned with a negative vision <laughs> that you say, you know what, I'm kind of recalibrating my vision. I'm sort of really getting getting honed in now. 
And keep that going with, with repetition and experience, meaning that from the day to day, you're holding yourself accountable. No longer fretting this way. Every day, writing it down. Um, I have a, uh, a calendar, okay? I mean, I could run and get it, but you know, what are you letting go? Know what you're letting go. In the book that I'm working on, same thing. What are you letting go? I'm letting go of fear, embarrassment, shame, um, whatever else that you feel is weighing on you, restlessness, anxiety. I mean, you can make, I'm letting this go. Can you do it unequivocally? You can. You are at the helm. You're at the driving range. You're at the steering wheel. You are asking. You are knowing. Asking you shall receive. Okay? Live by a motto. Asking you shall receive. Make it happen. Make it manifest. Say, I intend and demand to manifest this into my reality. What do you demand to manifest into your reality? What do you call in then to show up? I call in love. I am calling in acceptance. I'm calling in a furry kitty cat. I'm calling in a galloping horse of my own. I'm calling in a new lifestyle. I'm calling in a new value system. I'm calling in a new faith. I'm calling in a new creativity. I am calling it in. I'm, I'm calling this in. I'm, hello. You know, I'm calling in prosperity. Um, can, can you deliver that to me today? Um, I really want to manifest this. You know, call it in. Ask for it to show up. Please show me that you are, you know, and put your new life into some new gears going. See what it's going to feel like. Live like. And, and keep your eyes on that prize. Knowing that you are responsive. A viewer's like, peace and harmony, we can't see your head. So can you change things? I hope you can see my head. Uh, I hope this isn't being cut off. I mean, my situation here, you know, is... Um, that I want to help uh, and, and create a, a good environment where you can feel on, you know, that you're not forgotten. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your support, your comments, and um, your inquiries. And please feel free to comment, share, donate, and support. And if there's something that you want to explore, put it in the comments, make a donation, Put it in the comments or notes what you want us to dish up, put out there, and see if we can get some things sorted out for you and on the road to sort of whatever it is, post-apocalyptic, you want to experience in your life. This is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today, and I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate. For more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day. You have got it.